Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Warhammer video. Today I'm going to watch the video on the newly released Dwarf Let's Play video by Creative Assembly and see what we can pick out from the battle featured here. Uh, it's been a pretty exciting week for Total War Warhammer between the campaign map being released in the Humble Bundle that you can buy for as little as a dollar if you'd like, which I'll put the link in the description below, and I'll do a video on that in a few days, though I want to wait for the uh, charity to move along a little bit, that way people aren't just coming to the video to try and get their hands on a copy of the map. Um, but besides that, yeah, it's been a very exciting week. This video was uh, extremely great, showcasing how well the game's coming along. Um, I really wish I was able to go to EGX to play. But unfortunately, I live in the United States, so that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. But regardless, let's go ahead and get started with this video and see what we can pick out. So the first thing of note is that this battle takes place in the Underway, which Thorgrim Grudgebearer briefly mentions during his pre-battle speech. Uh, the Underway was built by the dwarves um, quite a long time ago, back near the dawn of the Warhammer world, really. And it was during the height of their power that this road connected all of their keeps to each other, and it was completely impenetrable. Back during these times, laying siege to the dwarves was pretty much impossible, and the Greenskins and Skaven could do absolutely nothing to their fortresses back then. But when the Great Earthquake caused, in a combination by the Slon and the Skaven, caused the World Edge Mountains to shake, unfortunately this shattered open many of the ancient roads and the holes themselves, resulting in the state you see here. Uh, it's been conquered by Greenskins, and this is all that's left of it. As you can see, they've defaced everything, made Dwarven statues into idols of Gork and Mork and such, but... Alright, so we've got some units here. Uh, we've got a Dwarf Thane here. We saw him in the uh, cinematic video, which I think a number of people mistook him for Thorgrim on foot, but now he's just a Thane. Um, though I'm super excited to use one. Uh, we've got some great organ guns here, and I'm glad to see that many of the units have actually been extremely faithfully recreated between, from the tabletop to this game. Uh, we got our flame cannons here. Um, it's, it's kind of funny seeing that they deploy units of four. Um, this game in scope is so much bigger than anything you'd ever see on tabletop, just from the sheer size of the units and the amount of war machines. Here we've got Iron Drakes, which we'll go into them a little bit later, because they've actually changed pretty dramatically. Um, they they have been altered to fit this format a little better. Uh, and there you got your Dwarf Thunderers, we've got some Slayers there in the back, which I believe he's going to zoom in on here in just a sec. Uh, the Slayers have turned out as awesome as one could hope for. Um, can't wait to use them myself. I wonder if it's possible to run an all-Slayer army. I certainly hope so. Um, one of the interesting things about this... Um, particular is I'm, I'm glad to see that the scope of the Underway has been very, very carefully um, recreated. Now, when I heard there was going to be tunnel fighting, I expected it to be quite a bit more narrow than this. Um, that being said, this does put some interesting limitations on the dwarves, as from what you'll see in this video, they're quite reliant on their range fire power, which is appropriate. Um, and this style of fighting really doesn't allow them the strategy of hiding in a corner and just obliterating enemies before they can get close, because you've got goblins coming in from every single direction from what he's showing right there, which, on a side note, actually gets me very excited for the potential of beastmen in this game, because for beastmen to be done right, they need to have the ambush rule, um, at least as an NPC faction. And so the idea that we're going to have maybe an Empire army fighting in the forest with beastmen coming out of every which direction, Minotaurs coming into your flank, all sorts of stuff, is very exciting and really leads credence to that this game is going to be everything I could have possibly hoped for at the very least. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. We've got some... Oh, there are Longbeards with uh, great weapons, which does have an interesting point of that since it specifically notates that they have great weapons, it leads me to think that we're going to be able to make the different versions of the units, like you would in tabletop, so you can make long beards with great weapons, long beards with hand and shield, and stuff like that. Um, of course, it's got quite a few classic dwarf warriors. Um, I have noted a couple of interesting ways that they've um, re-brought in some rules. Here, if you know when they hover over the goblin units, they actually have a special rule called Expendable, which actually may crack me up a bit. Um, but this refers to a rule in the uh, Orc and Goblin book where goblins are so small and so cowardly 
that orcs don't care when goblins flee. It's just not, I guess, not surprising to them. So when goblins flee, they're probably going to have no morale impact on orcs in this game, which is extremely exciting recreation as it allows goblins to just be perfect cannon fodder for orc armies. Um, but as I was saying about the Iron Drakes earlier, one thing you'll notice is that here they basically spew forth like giant flamethrowers and cause massive AoE damage to large blocks of infantry. This is actually quite different than their tabletop iteration, which their tabletop version was that they fired basically single blasts of an alchemical flame, uh, and it was extremely good at piercing heavy armor. So they were more useful for dealing with heavy monstrous cavalry, uh, giant monsters, heavily armored lords, stuff like that, where in this they appear to be much more designed to be basically minute infantry version of flame cannons. Um, another interesting note that they mentioned a little earlier in this video, but um, we'll kind of see a point of it becoming a problem later when I'll point out when that happens, is that friendly fire is a problem in this game, which is something that's been a part of the Total War series, but not part of the Warhammer Fantasy series. So it's interesting that you're going to have to kind of pay attention, especially with a dwarf army who relies on so much firepower, to carefully position your units. There's going to be a few times where you're actually going to see the dwarves shoot their own guys in the back, um, which is an interesting change from Warhammer Fantasy where friendly fire wasn't possible unless you were playing the Skaven, who often would do it on purpose. Uh, so here we see plenty of goblin units that we've already seen before. We're seeing, you know, spider riders... Uh, goblins with spears, there's going to be some trolls in a little bit, and Arachnorok spider, doom divers, all that stuff. Um, it's, it, I'm glad to see that there are going to be some all goblins army, all goblin armies, which are going to be a bit different than your mixed armies or even your just all orc armies. Um, their morale is probably going to be much lower on average, uh, especially since the expendable rule likely doesn't apply to other goblins. Uh, so uh, this battle is interesting. Uh, I, I wish I was playing this, uh, though uh, I'm sure if you watch anyone who knows their Total War games and is watching this video, they complain about this <laughs> this um, general who left his flanks unguarded, despite the fact the goblins bring along plenty of fast cavalry, um, which got his iron drakes and thunderers stuck up in a fight that wasted precious time. Alright, here we've got our trolls and giants coming from the back, which uh, if... I was playing this map for the first time would certainly cause a minor heart attack, uh, especially if you didn't notice them until early. Um, one thing that's really interesting is, is the way they've adapted the trolls rules. So in tabletop, trolls are pretty notorious for two reasons. A, they have regeneration, which makes them exceptionally hard to kill, and B, they suffer from stupidity, which tends to mean in tabletop that if the general isn't nearby or there isn't someone who's boosting their leadership, they often... Um, become too stupid to do anything and just sort of stumble forward at a really slow rate and you can't control them. It seems the way that Total War Warhammer has fixed this issue, or interpreted it I should say, is that they've given the trolls um, extremely low morale to make up for the stupidity rule not really translating well into the Warhammer medium. And that instead of actually having regeneration, they seem to just have higher armor which in my opinion is a perfectly fine adaptation, um, is really fascinating. I love that giant fall there. It's great that they have seemed to keep in the special rule that when giants fall, they actually do damage to the people they fall on, because if you watch the impact, you'll see a couple dwarves go flying. Um, trolls, though, it, it's definitely going to be one of those units that you're going to want near your within your general's radius, because otherwise, I mean, the trolls easily could have won that fight. Oh, there you see he just shot Thorgrim. But... The trolls usually should have won that fight, but because their stupidity has been transferred into extremely low morale, they broke despite the fact that they're pretty much just fighting against Thunderers. Um, I hear they're showing off some UI stuff. Uh, so far, I actually really like this UI. Um, I have not played a bunch of Total War games. I played at least a thousand hours on Shogun 2 and played some uh, Total War Rome 2, but outside of that, um, I tend to spend my time with some different strategy games though I'll definitely be moving to Total War for this. Um, another interesting thing is that we're going to see here in a second is uh, how magical vortexes are being interpreted. Uh, I think the moment with the Curse of the Bad Moon is coming up in just a moment, which we'll go to that. Oh, here we got the gyrocopters. I wanted to make a quick note about them. Really excited for the gyrocopters. It's very interesting that they are a unit 
that never engages in melee, which they can do in tabletop. Uh, I'm sure they'll be able to fight against other flyers, but I like that in here they just do what you would expect them to do realistically, which is to just fly around and shoot people with their brimstone guns, and they have the dive bomb rule from tabletop, which is extremely great. Uh, I wonder if gyro bombers will be in this game, as they're essentially gyrocopters that are much more specialized at dropping large bombs on massed infantry, so they're basically a superior version for what he's about to use these gyrocopters for. Uh, that being said, I am super excited about the gyrocopters. I wonder if there's a way we can give them steam guns, because in this they only seem to have brimstone guns, um, and steam guns were much better at taking down mass infantry, as we're seeing him trying to do here with his bombs. Um, they were actually much better at it than even the bombs were, because you would just float up and fire a giant template into a unit, and it was low strength and didn't pierce armor, but against low toughness, low armor units like goblins, it just did terrible devastation. Uh, over here we see the Arachnorok getting stuck in... Uh, the Arachnorok uh, is pretty tough. I mean, he showed up in every single video so far. It seems like he seems to be Creative Assembly's favorite monster, seeing as every time they do anything publicly, there's always an Arachnorok involved. Um, I, I almost worry that Thorgrim gets stuck in against him in a little bit, and he seems to decimate Thorgrim. But that may be because this is early on in the campaign, and perhaps Thorgrim doesn't have all his magical equipment... Or maybe their Ragnarok is just designed to be extremely powerful. Um, that being said, maybe the Slayers could have had better success against it, because it seems like the Dwarves really struggled to take down this big old spider. Oh, there's the Curse of the Bad Moon, which, uh, just like Magical Vortex is in the game, I'm glad to see that they've brought in that once it's cast, it just wanders. Um, it literally can go in any random direction. It could hit your own guys. It could hit the enemy like you want it to. You never know. Uh, here we see Nobnail's Backbiter, who I've searched and doesn't seem to exist in the lore, so he just seems to be some random goblin that you're going to fight. Uh, despite the fact that he's a wizard character, he's actually not only getting stuck in against the dwarves in combat, but actually seems to do okay. Um, this seems to indicate that a lot of the wizard characters are going to be much tougher than I initially thought they would be. Um, as in Warhammer Fantasy Tabletop, if you threw a wizard into combat against even the most basic of units, they would get absolutely slaughtered. Uh, here we're getting to see Thorgrim's magic items that he brought into this battle. Um, I'm really excited to see that they decided to expand uh, the magic items available to the armies of the tabletop. Dwarves in tabletop can only take runic items. They don't have magic potions or the dwarf equivalent of the ruby ring of fire. Um, so it's exciting to see that they've brought those things over. Uh, so even though they don't use magic, Thorgrim gets to sort of cheat and fire off a fireball from the lore of fire to hit that Arachnorok spider, even though it seems to basically bounce off. Um, overall, extremely excited for this game. I'm loving the way it's looking. All the units capture the aesthetic perfectly well. The terrain is just absolutely fabulous. We've got those waterfalls in the background, and it's that proud dwarven architecture, but it's just been absolutely devastated and ruined by goblins smearing all sorts of nameless horribleness over it. Uh, I actually find the Iron Drakes to be a considerable improvement um, over their tabletop counterpart. I almost wish that's what they did in the real game, but I guess that would have been kind of repetitive um, with the Flame Cannons. But nonetheless, uh, I'm hoping they're a more early game unit because of the fact that they're able to just strike down massed infantry as opposed to in Warhammer Tabletop where they tend to, they're a rare unit, meaning they're one of the hardest units to come by and quite expensive, but they specialize against some of the other most expensive things in the game. Uh, Alright, this battle's pretty much wrapping up. I think it ends uh, here in just maybe 30 seconds or so, so I'm just going to talk about a couple things um, I saw that were interesting. Um, the one thing I did note is it doesn't seem like the dwarves have any anti-magic capabilities, and maybe that's because there isn't a runesmith on the field. Uh, I'm really not sure how they're going to pull off a runesmith in Total War Warhammer. Um, because in traditional Warhammer, dwarves cannot cast magic. Um, the one thing that runesmiths do regularly is that when you put them in a unit, they make dwarves uh, gain the armor-piercing trait, and they give the dwarves a higher resistance to magic, but I haven't seen anything that seems to suggest that the dwarves have a higher resistance than anybody else. Um, granted, we only saw one spell use this fight, and it seemed to completely miss, so that might be somewhat related. Um... But it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I'm certainly excited to see the Anvil of Doom, as it seems like 
creative assembly for these four armies is bringing in every single unit from the books, which is great. Um, it goes along with their credence of they're going for deep, not wide, um, by fleshing out these armies as much as possible. So I think we're going to see some absolutely fantastic things. I really like the AI so far. The fact that the spider riders actually bothered to look for a way to get to his ranged units instead of just running smack into his front line was very impressive as far as I'm concerned. Um, and really does service to how I would want the computer to behave, at least on hard mode, of being intelligent and doing things I would expect an enemy general to do. Um, but that's pretty much it for this video. I had a ton of fun watching this. I was squealing like a little girl throughout most of it. <laughs> um, I'll have more lore videos out soon. I'll probably have one out later today, but I just wanted to do a quick video on this just to point out all the fun things I saw in this video. It looks like a ton of fun. Creative Assembly is doing a great job. I hope they come to do some uh, convention or something in the United States at some point. Um, Texas. Creative Assembly, if you're ever watching. <laughs> uh, but I absolutely am just beyond thrilled at how things are going and can't wait for the future. Um, thanks for coming by the channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, take care. Thanks for watching, and I'll have another video out later today.